Every person learns differently and no two students are alike. We all have unique brains and our experiences have an impact on how we learn in various ways. Good day everyone, I'm Rizalyn Aibodigo and I will be discussing about the learning theories, how do they function, and some of its practical application or scenarios inside the classroom. So let's begin with the first one, the behavioral learning theory. Behaviorism theory draws heavily on the theories put forth by American psychologist B.F. Skinner, who believed that learning takes place as a result of repeated rewards or punishment. Despite Skinner's belief that this is how learning can take place, the behaviorist theory is now most frequently used in classrooms as a tool for behavior management. Here is an example of giving reward in the classroom. In Mrs. Cruz's nursery class, she asked the kids to clean up their classroom. They obeyed Mrs. Cruz, that's why she gave them stickers as a reward for their good. Meanwhile, for the negative reinforcement or punishment, a girl from Mrs. Cruz's class took a toy from her classmate without permission. Mrs. Cruz asked the girl to say thank you at the very least, but she did not obey. That's why Mrs. Cruz asked her to sit on a chair to realize she didn't show a good behavior. Second theory is the cognitive learning theory. The work of John Piaget, who challenged the notion that learners are passive and merely respond to the environmental stimuli, is a major source of inspiration for this theory. Cognitive learning theory aims to explain how the mind functions during the learning process, rather than concentrating just on observable behavior. The brain functions similarly to a computer in that it analyzes information once it is taken in and uses it to produce learning outcomes. Piaget's four stages of development indicate the learner's ability to understand abstract and complex concepts. Here's a simple example. Mrs. Santos helps her kindergarten pupils express their emotions in words. She is aware that children this age are egocentric by nature and have hard time understanding Another example, in order to engage her pupils' past knowledge, Ms. Drio poses questions at the beginning of the discussion. She is aware that by doing this, the likelihood that the new information will be recalled will be increased by creating connections between it and the previous acquired knowledge. Third, Constructivism Theory Schemas that the learners bring to the learning process shape new learning. One of the key developers of constructivist learning theory is Lev Vygotsky. Vygotsky felt that social interaction is essential for cognitive growth and that learning is a collaborative process. An example is, Mr. Celia let his students work in groups. He is aware that working together with others who have more advanced skills help other students learn and enables them to achieve tasks that they are not quite capable of doing on their own. Another example, teacher Annie pairs learners who are performing on or above grade level with learners who are below grade level, and she invites them to turn and discuss their learning at various points during class. The fourth learning theory is humanism. Rather than just achieving predetermined learning goals, Learning is to realize a person's potential through self-actualization. Key idea in this approach is Master's research on the hierarchy of needs, which emphasizes the learner's cognitive and emotive needs in particular. Here's an example. Mr. Mina, during his homeroom class, checked in on his learner's emotional well-being and proactively teach them specific coping skills and strategies. Another example. A grade to teacher, Mr. Roberto, asked each pupil to set a reading goal for the month. Lastly, one of the most recent ideas of educational learning theories is connectivism, which is developed by George Siemens. It emphasizes on the notion that connections help people grow and learn, 
learning might come from hobbies, objectives, and other individuals. An example, Teacher Marie, a grade 3 science teacher, let her pupils plant trees for them to make connections with nature and one another as well as excites them, helping them to learn. Another example, Mrs. Wilson let her students work in groups so that they can create connections and relationships to help them feel motivated about learning. As you can see, modern classrooms use a variety of learning theories to enhance the learning process rather than relying simply on one theory. Given the reality of education in the 21st century, each theory has strengths and limitations. Therefore, educators must walk the narrow line between creating a student-centered classroom and meeting rigorous learning standards. Teacher, 